LSQ is a company that develops and sells semiconductors, PKI, and post-quantum technology hardware and software products. And with me is Carlos Moreira, the CEO, to explain what it is you're doing. We were talking a little bit about how I was, I've been reading more and seeing more lately about how um, quantum computing is so powerful that it can break code someday, and even cryptography, Close that around. you are working on a solution to prevent that. So explain what CLSQ is doing. Absolutely. So quantum, which is about three to five years to, to be uh, here with us, some companies already have quantum computers, will be so powerful with unlimited computer power, then we'll break all the cryptos, RSA, triple DAS, all the traditional crypto that we use to secure your credit cards, to secure your connected devices, your home devices, TV, all that will be breakable. So, so we have to rethink, re-engineer products, microchips, in a way that once that happens, the chips will have what you call post-quantum cryptography, it means that the chip will be able to defend the attack of the quantum computer. Okay. For the moment, it's, it's mathematical process because it's a theoretical process as well because we don't have yet a quantum computer. Right. So we have to imagine how that power will be. And, and this is what we have. So CLSQ, there are microchips, then they are being used in drones, they are being used in uh, home appliances, in Cisco routers. Those are microchips, then they are now securing the traditional security against a cyber attack, and they are getting ready for a post-quantum defense as soon quantum computers will arrive. So you think quantum computing is what, about three to five years away? Maybe before. I mean, okay. the, at the beginning were companies like IBM that, uh, that announced that they had a quantum capabilities. Actually, I know they have. Uh, some government are also moving into quantum because uh, it's the next uh, way of encrypting everything. Uh, there is already satellites and they are sending quantum signal. Actually, our company launched 13 satellites, okay. Pico satellite with SpaceX, that they are now sending signals mm -hmm. and they are yeah. protected with that level of security. So, yeah, so, so we are very close to, to, yeah. to that situation. And, and a world without your technology uh, would be just a disaster, right? I so, mean, we it could... So, so you know, the, the cyber attacks are so uh, constant every day. Sure. Uh, we are attacking now banks, but we are attacking mm -hmm. uh, military facilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, imagine this, if this technology gets into the hands of their own people. I mean, they will have unlimited damage capabilities, and those will be very, very complex damage. I mean, they could stop down an entire city. Oh, absolutely. An entire yeah. hospital, electricity. Uh -huh. So, so it, it, is, it is essential, and actually, I am very happy to see that in the United States, the semiconductor industry is booming because the uh, government has decided to reinforce the independence of the United States in terms right. of semiconductor. You know, you have now Colorado and, and few... Right. Intel is building an yeah. Ohio plant. And, yeah. Building their fabs. And why? Because uh, you mentioned there's a war between China and Taiwan. Everything will stop, will stop down. This is why companies like CLSQ are growing. Is We are preparing an alternative against that scenario, right? And Europe, as I said, Europe has just authorized in France $45 billion just to develop the semiconductor business in Europe. It's something we, we were negligent. We let Taiwan to be the factory of the world. Right. But what, what about if Taiwan gets in, the, in a trouble, right? So, so we need to be independent in this technology. Yeah, it needs to be diversified in different parts of the world. For so sure. quantum will also accelerate all the things. Not only will it be a threat, it will also be a solution. I mean, imagine quantum feeding the power of AI. Mm -hmm. AI will have unlimited computational power. You know, a AI requires a lot of uh, computer power behind. Mm -hmm. NVIDIA is now providing right. uh, technology there. But uh, in the future, quantum computer will accelerate that capability. So AI will be able to solve very complex projects. Mm -hmm and problems that we are not able to solve now because we don't have yet the computational ca capability yeah. to do so. So this is converging, you know, this technology is converging. They are exponentially accelerating each other. But somebody has to sell chips at the end of the day. The chip is the place where you put this technology and that's what CLSQ does, right? Yeah. Well, and you've got the power of the quantum computer and the AI that can learn from itself totally. together. Totally. And that will come up with all kinds of solutions for yeah. for humanity. Can you, can you explain? Like what? What can we can we expect from? I mean, that? humanity. Mm. Uh, there, there are there are two things. One is that we will have one trillion objects to connect, connected to the internet, and we are in that. Pro for a moment, we connect your mobile phones, on on uh, home uh, detectors or alarm system. But in the future, will be everything. Will be your 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 car, your fridge, your uh, smoke detector. Everything will be connected. By being connected, you need to be sure that everything is secure because if you leave one thing which is not secure, that's going to be the entry Trojan horse mm -hmm. for the entire facility. 
So, so humans will need to live in an interconnected world, which is great because a lot of good things will happen, but it's also different from the world we are living in our days. Mm -hmm. And there's where it's important that, and there's another focus on, on our company, is that we protected that human that is going to be in a digital economy so we don't disappear. We don't get totally disrupted by technology. And this needs to be coded into the code that those chips has and those uh, computers have, protecting the, the center of gravity of the human. And that human person needs to be treated apart from everything else. Imagine an AI that will be so powerful with quantum computer that will make humans irrelevant, right? Mm. That, that's a risk. Because <laughs> yes, the AI say human is slow, uh, we breed, we send we CO2, sick, right? yeah. we get sick, uh, we, uh -huh. we, we, are, uh, we need to eat um, food. Uh, so it's a liability, mm. right? So we have to teach that AI that this is actually not, that we have been here for 200,000 years and we were able to survive. Yeah. Uh, and, be, and we were against many uh, challenges like wars and virus and things like that. So we should be prevailing in the fourth industrial revolution, right? But this is not yet done. I mean, we still have the risk. That's why people are concerned that AI and this technology, because they're growing so fast and so, and so powerful, it could actually disrupt um, in a way that the human doesn't have yeah. any more meaning. Well, and there has been some talk about regulation of all of this. What's your thoughts about that? So, so this is one of the reasons we are doing this, uh, actually uh, entering the U.S., because the U.S. legislation is going in the right direction now. You have the MATTR, M-A-T-T-R, regulation that says that if you want to connect anything in your house, manufacturers should develop security at the object level Otherwise, they are liable for a potential threat that you might have in your house, somebody hacking you. Mm -hmm. So we are putting the responsibility of the manufacturing in okay. It's like the same thing of a car, right? Mm -hmm. When you drive a car, you expect the car to have the right security. Mm -hmm. uh, you expect the same thing for somebody selling you any object. Before, there was no regulation and everybody did whatever they wanted. Now this regulation is happening. And uh, you have NIST, uh, NIST in, in the United States. It's also developing new uh, algorithms on, on quantum. So the movement is getting there and has been an enormous progress in the last 18 months mm. uh, and I think it's going to continue yeah. because we are feeling the threat also before that was kind of an imaginary threat now it's real right we, we see the consequences of yeah. not putting well, regulation. Well this moves so quickly even this year the AI advancement and the investments in it and all of that has just happened so fast. It's exponential because technology uh, has a, a moment of exponentiality and, and we are on that moment of exponentiality. That happened in the Renaissance uh, in, uh, in the 16th century, where architecture, geometric, mathematics got together, mm -hmm. and a new civilization has started, a huge progress. This is happening now again, mm -hmm. is where AI is feeding uh, many technologies, then they are using AI, accelerating the medical field, in the arch architectural design, uh, NFTs, all that is getting accelerated. Mm -hmm. And we are entering into a point where technology teach each other even without human intervention. Right, yeah. Uh, and this is, uh, this is actually scary, you know, because they start to... <laughs> the fact that it can learn from itself is a little, yeah. a little, it can be a little spooky. Yeah. Okay, so finally, um, is the manpower there for this new industrial revolution? Do you think that there's enough students and are they learning the right topics to help with this? I think, I think the, to be honest, uh, no, uh, we didn't have enough. I, I am actually very happy AI is helping because somebody, a lot of people ask me, is AI, is AI going to destroy jobs? And the answer is AI is going to destroy jobs or somebody using AI. <laughs> so if you don't use AI and somebody uses AI, that person will take your job, basically. Uh, okay. So uh -huh. you, need to, you need to use those technologies as a way to reinforce your knowledge. Uh, Engineering is not necessarily um, the only way to get there. There are many other ways to get that data scientists are coming mm. big time. Uh, psychologists are now working in technology companies yeah. to understand human behavior. Mm -hmm. so, so this is creating a, a new dimension. We are using France because France invented the microchip. Mm. People don't, don't, you know, the chip that we have on your, on your credit card is a French, French invention. So you have a very interesting number of engineers working on microchips there in yeah. France. Yeah. Well, the future is going to be fascinating. It's, it's fascinating. a fascinating time to be alive. It so to be wise and responsible, but um, the opportunity is there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for your time.